I had a friend of mine, a younger surveyor, come to me a few months ago, and uh, he, he was upset. He had gotten into trouble at work for laying out some improvements on a site in the wrong place. And so he, he, he came to me and wanted to talk about that a little bit. And as he told me his story about what happened, I realized that he wasn't really at fault for what happened. Uh, the problem was his company, company he worked at, uh, they didn't have good processes to handle uh, what occurred when there was a design change. So you can't managers blame your people for mistakes when you don't have a good system in place, a good set of processes in place. And so let me give just give you an example. Uh, this isn't exactly what happened in this situation I talked about with a friend of mine, but it's a, it's a similar situation. And I think it will illustrate uh, the point that I'm trying to make. So let's say you've got a site where you're designing, uh, you're designing, let's say a, a single family home subdivision, and uh, you've got some some terrain on this particular site and so there's some retaining walls and so as, as part of the uh, construction process proceeds the, uh, the the design team realizes that the footing for one of the retaining walls is going to conflict with some existing or proposed utilities it really doesn't matter which and so they the decision is made that they need to move the wall okay so the structural engineer uh, relocates the wall and maybe he's got to change the height of the wall and uh, change the footing, design of the footing, but there's there's redesign of one of the of the retaining walls. Okay, so what you have to think about in a situation like that is all the other things that are going to be impacted by that design change, right? And there's what I call on any kind of project like this, there's what I call ripple effects, right? So there's the there's the main change, right? We had to move move the retaining wall and redesign it, but then there's all these subsequent impacts of that, right? Ripple effects. And you need a good system in place to deal with those, right? If you don't have a good system to deal with changes like that, uh, then mistakes are going to be made. And you can't blame your people for those mistakes. The problem isn't your people. The problem is your system, right? It's your processes. So let's think about that example I just gave you. And um, I wrote down some of the impacts here. So we've moved that retaining wall. Now, what's going to be impacted on that project from that change? Well, you're going to change your grade and your drainage. Right? You move a retaining wall, some slopes are going to change, uh, the, the, the drainage is going to change, so there's going to be an impact there. You could potentially impact the building setback. So if you, have a, if you have a tight site where you've already got buildings up against setback and you move a retaining wall, <laughs> um, so it, it, there could be a couple problems there, right? If you move the, let's say they want the retaining wall on the lot line. So you move the retaining wall, now you've got to move the lot line. Well, you might have just gotten too close to one of the adjacent buildings, right? Or in some age, some areas, the agency requires a minimum distance between the retaining wall and the building, so you could you could violate that uh, setback requirement. Um, you could impact utility and drainage easements, right? So maybe you need a a drainage easement along one side of the wall, the low side of the wall, right? Maybe they're putting in a French drain or some other kind of swale along the low side of the wall, and that falls in a drainage easement so it can be maintained. Well, you can, you move the wall, now you have to move the drainage easement, right? And of course, it's gonna impact the layout of the improvements. All of those things we just talked about, the change of the wall, the change of the grading, the drainage, change of the drainage, that all those improvements now have to be laid out in a different place. And I'm sure there's other things I haven't even thought of here, right? So there's all these ripple effects. So how do you handle those ripple effects? Well, you make that design change with the retaining wall, can you blame the civil engineer? because he, he forgot to update, you know, he failed to update the drainage. Can you blame the surveyor, the boundary surveyor, for uh, failing to notice that the, uh, re the retaining wall now encroaches in the drainage easement and the drainage easement didn't move? Can you blame the architect because his building footprints violate the, the building setback now? Can you blame the land planner for, you know, you, you move the retaining wall, you change the lots, to match the retaining wall, now you violate one of the minimum lot area requirements of the of the zoning code. Can you blame, blame the land planner for that? Can you blame the construction surveyor for staking the wall in the wrong place? I, well, the answer to that question is all those questions. It depends, but you certainly the answer is certainly no. If you don't have a good process to make sure that a design change like that, um, that when that happens, that you have that. You need a good process to notify all the, the impacted parties on the design team 
and, and the construction team. And you need to make sure that updated drawings and specifications flow to all the right people. And yeah, if you, if you don't have that system in place, if you don't have good processes for that, then no, you can't blame any of those people. It's not their fault. It's the fault of the processes that are in place to deal with changes like that. And those changes are, those kind of changes are fairly typical, right? As you get further into the design process and into the construction project process, things change and the site design needs to change. And so, Part of being a good consultant, uh, a good land development consultant, is making sure that there are processes in place to deal with those changes. So I, I found in my experience that managers, uh, especially managers that lack good processes, they like to blame people for the problems that happen. Right? It's easy to do that. It's easy to blame people. Okay, but most of the time I've found incompetent people are not the problem. The problem is the systems and processes that are in place. And that's usually where the fault lies. The fault lies with the system with the processes, not, not with the people, especially if you find as a manager or leader that you're placing blame on people at a lower level, lower, lower experience level in your organization, uh, and you got a problem and uh, that's your problem. Huh. So, you know, when clients and project owners shouldn't put up with that, right? Uh, you, you, in this situation that I talked about in the beginning with my friend, and he, this is a junior survey tech, right? And he's getting blamed for a major mistake. That, that wasn't his fault. That was his boss's fault, right? He didn't have the right processes in place. And so, you know, if you're a leader or manager, you need to step up, right? You need to own the fact that you might have uh, either either broken processes or no processes at all. Usually, it's no, you know, just don't, organizations don't have good processes, and that's why these problems happen. So, you know, the, the, the philosophy that I try and live by here at Refine Horizons is if, if we make a mistake, uh, the buck stops with me. Right? I'm the owner. It's my responsibility to make sure that we have a good system in place, good processes in place. And I don't blame my two-year cat tech uh, for when, when there's, a, there's a problem on a job site. Um, if, there's a, if a mistake's been made, I have good people working for me. And uh, that mistake was caused by more than likely by either lack of a process or broken process. It wasn't because I had incompetent people working for me. And in my experience, that's the, the case the majority of the time. So don't blame your people for mistakes if you don't have good processes in place.